know that all deaf people complain about the big world, big hearing world, but you can't change anything. You can't change the world. You can't change the law. The importance is you can find your way and avoid the problem. And think about the positive things. Think about positive ways to get through and overcome and cope. The importance for deaf children is to be awake and alert and for their future lives. It's important to take deaf courses for deaf studies, deaf history, of people's success, so they can feel good and be inspired, and they can see that they can have the possibility to be successful, and they can look at look up to those people. Because growing up, I wasted my time. I was asleep. I was not awake. I was not alert until I got to college. Now that I'm in college, now that when I was in college, I was alert and I was awake. I wonder why I didn't have that when I was a boy. My first year in my master's program, I went back to RITD for theaters. I wanted to teach theater, but I was not sure if that was the right bag for me. I had a big heart for fine arts. So I decided to go back to my old school, Penn State University, and meet with my advisor and sit down and discuss some things, some specific things that I want to do. So I discussed my dreams, and I wanted to help deaf people and show them different arts and research about arts and analyze deaf history. So he decided, what about the Ph.D. program? What? I never thought about getting into the Ph.D. program. You can teach hearing students about art. What? I remember reading an article in a book about this deaf artist by the name of Douglas Tilden. He did teach hearing students in an art class. I can do the same thing as him. He didn't speak. He always wrote and gestured. Perfect. So I applied for my Ph.D. at Penn State, and they accepted me. So I started at my Ph.D. program, and I said bye to the theater world. I can act, I can teach, but I prefer to go study fine arts. So I entered, the, entered Penn State University. I was already confident because I already attended a year there. So I knew some of the teachers, so I was ready to roll my sleeves up and work hard, and I was motivated. But one thing about the Ph.D. program, you must enter with motivations and think with confidence. Without those two, you cannot survive in the Ph.D. program, no matter if you're deaf, hearing, black, white, headless, armless, whatever. Confidence and motivations are the two things. Now remember, Penn State University is not big on the support of interpreters. So I had to find an interpreter. So I looked through newspapers and advertisements, and I saw a few students who needed interpreters, and then saw their experience of how they got interpreters. So I took advantage of that. The school would have to pay for the interpreters, but I would have to find time to find their free time and match it with my free time. So there was about three or four interpreters who didn't know anything about art. So I had to teach them some art signs and vocabulary. And that was a good experience for me. And then I was left with independent study. And we was able to write back and forth. 
teachers were willing to learn some of the signs. And it was an interesting start because I started teaching hearing students. I will never forget the moment. The first day of class, I entered early. I was the only person there. So I wrote my name on the board. My name is Paul Johnson and the name of the course. And I sat down and I waited for the other students to enter the class. So there was about 30 or 40 students who entered. So I was really nervous because I never taught hearing students. So I was waiting for the interpreter to come. I was really depending on an interpreter, but no one showed. So I got up and drew a face with a tongue hanging out that looked sick. So the students felt like I was bashing the teacher. And I wrote, no, I'm Paul jo Johnson. So I wrote on the board, and the students looked like they were all freaked out. They thought they was in a dreamland. And they thought the teacher was really dramatic. So I passed out the syllabus with the objectives. So I was hoping some of them would drop the course and maybe 40 students and it would go down to like 10 students. So two days later, the same 40 students came back to class. I was like, what? And there was another 10 students standing outside the room begging to enter my class. So I let a few more in. So I had a total of 45 students in my class. And finally, the interpreter shows up. The interpreter was really nervous. So I explained to the students there were three different ways to communicate with me. The first way, you can communicate me, with me through the interpreter and the interpreter through me. The second way, you can sign and fingerspell, and I can give you some cards. Or the third way, we can just write back and forth. You can choose. So most everybody in the class chose to pick to talk through the interpreter.